Hi, welcome to Old Guys Gentlemen Flex Fountain Pens, episode number 59. And today what I'm going to be covering is the Lamy Dialogue number 3. And I think it's model number 74. I see 74 listed to it sometimes, but I think it's, it's Lamy Dialogue 3. I got it recently from Watch Warehouse, which at the time had a significantly lower price than other pen dealers. Although I was looking just before I put this on and I noticed that Cult Pens has a sale and it's um, even cheaper than what I bought it for. And it's, and it's not cheap. It's like um, a uh, $200 pen, but it's a pretty cool pen, very well built. And you'll see that in a second. Uh, the watch warehouse people delivered it pretty quickly and for what it's worth I got a certificate of authentication came in a nice box bigger than this than this box go ahead and open this you know, it's packaged pretty well but um, I don't really care for the packaging I mean it's kind of exciting when you're first opening it saying oh ah, nice box and then it goes away into another place that I never see again until I uh, am, might be ready to sell it at some point in the future. Ta da! Not sure what this did. I think it helped hold this in place because that's kind of loose. Anyhow, so um, there's the pen. What? Won't pull apart. Where's the. Where's the nib? The nib is right behind this little ball. There it is. Pretty cool. We'll get more into that later. But that is the pen. Okay, also in the box, it's a cool, cool box. Let's look at other videos where it came in a, a small box. There's a pretty good in-depth in multiple languages description on how to fill it and how to pull it apart. There's even a section on how to clean it, which I thought was pretty neat. Examples of the um, the different nib sizes. And it came with well, these are the different models it has. Now, I had ordered uh, Piano Black, but uh, they only had one, and there was something wrong with the nib, and I wanted extra fine, so I ended up getting the Matte Black. This one might have been better than this one. I'll tell you why in a second, but I, but I like it. You get a free cartridge to go with it. Uh, I typically don't use these things unless it's just to empty it out and then use it as an eyedropper because that's, that's a lot of ink in there. So I may do that with this pen. Came with this device and, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. After I read this the second time, the instructions are here are pretty simple. And there are uh, videos online that you can go to that also um, show you pretty well how to fill it but I had some difficulty with it and I was trying to use this. This is not for use for filling. This is for use with um, cleaning. Being able to open that little valve and leave a port open so you can flush water through it, which I think is pretty cool that they think ahead on that. Uh, some of you might be thinking for $200, they should be thinking pretty cool. And you'd probably be right. So that's that. These, these are kind of in a category of pens called um, uh, Vanishing Points. This is one of my favorite pens. It's a, um, a Pilot uh, with Rodden in it, which is just... It's just really a cool pen. And it's a Vanishing Point different mechanism it 
And this is one of my favorite pens. Easy and safe. Uh, I've never had a problem with this uh, on a plane. It doesn't leak. At least I've never had it leak. Easy to fill. That's that one. The other one I reviewed recently is this um, Curidas. It's a platinum Curidas. And it's got the same sort of mechanism as the other thing. I haven't had a chance to use this much other than in my journal, but uh, it's just got a really cool color to it. So I like gadgets. I saw this one. It's been out on the market for a while. Uh, since it's the Dialogue 3, I, maybe there's been two other versions. <laughs> I'll put that on there. Sorry, should have done my research. But it looks pretty good. In terms of the Piano Black versus this one, maybe I like this one in terms of looks only a lot better. And there's the little valve I showed earlier. The, someone referred to this as a ball valve. It's basically a cup, cup that rotates. Okay, so some stuff about the pen. So this is the Lamy Dialogue uh, in matte black. It's got a 14 karat extra fine nib. And if you write with a light hand, you can get this down to about 0.2 millimeters, which is triple extra fine. That's pretty fine. It's rated as extra fine. Because it's a German made pen, I was assuming that the extra fine would be like a Japanese fine plus or something like that. But it's like a triple extra fine with a light hand. Maybe with normal pressure it's a fine. Let's see, normal pressure. Yeah, that's more like a fine. But with light pressure you can get um, a, a very light uh, line like that. With increasing pressure on it up to a pressure pressure that I feel comfortable with. I have a lot of flex pens and so I kind of have muscle knowledge, <laughs> if that's a word, uh, for knowing how far I can push a nib. And uh, this is not sold as a flex nib, but I did read that it was a, a lively nib or a springy nib. Um, they hinted at some line variation and it's there. You can take this from about 0.2 millimeters to 0.86 millimeters with not all that much pressure to get that. So, in fact, here is uh, the famous figure eights that you do. And you can see how, like, if with a light hand, you can go really light and then get really dark. So if you just want to have a little hint of Spencerian kind of line variation, this is a pretty cool pen. Uh, it also is very responsive, and you can kind of see that here about how you can uh, come down with a, with a fair amount of pressure and, and getting that broad stroke, and it, um, it comes right up through fine into uh, triple extra fine for the next time you try it. So that's pretty good, and it was really smooth. I guess while we're talking about it, it's, it's kind of a kind of a cool looking pen. It's two-tone. It's 14 carats. And let's see if we can just show you the... Yeah. yeah. Extra fine 14K 585 gold Lamy. I kind of like it. And I'm using the Lamy Blue um, ink. I haven't tried other inks yet. So we'll see what happens with that. But It's a good size pen. It's six and a quarter inches extended. How does that compare to this guy? It's longer than the Curidas. Longer than that. What about a regular pen? Uh, this is um, another, I think this is platinum. It's Galaxy more, I know, I'm just showing off now, with more um, rod on it. It does not post, not supposed to post, but we'll just put a little post on there without any pressure. And it's about like that kind of pen. And one thing I didn't put on here is weight. 1.6 ounces. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it feels like a hefty pen. 
Now if I put the, um, the Scribo is 1.3 ounces. The, uh, the Miki, 1.1 ounces. I'm pretty sure this is one of the heavier pens that I have. Uh, but it's pretty well balanced. It's, it's comfortable. But one of the things I don't like, and it may be because I'm an older guy and I tend to have dry hands, is that when I hold a plastic pen, I have a fair amount of grip there. And in a regular pen, you'll have a section. So this is, this is pretty secure. I don't feel like this is going anywhere. I don't have to put a lot of pressure between my fingers to keep it in place. But with this one, uh, it just feels a little slippery, and there's no section. Uh, there is this uh, clip here that kind of keeps it between these two fingers. Um, but when I write, I, you know, it just takes a little bit of use, getting used to. I don't think I'll be writing any super long journals with this. I much prefer uh, a traditional section and something that's a little bit smoother and not matte. There's something about matte with my fingers that makes this just a little bit slippery. Okay, time for a writing example. I'll start doing, uh, I have a little bit of space here. I'll do some of those figure eights again. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. The other thing is I have not had this skip at all, and it's, it's really smooth. smooth just a hint of line variation doesn't take that much pressure to do it no skipping um, so let's kind of review the things I, I like and don't like about it the pros I like it it looks great it's uh, smooth with the ability to flex the extra fine is almost like a Japanese extra fine. It's heavy, which is also potentially a con, depending about how you feel about um, about uh, heavy pens. It's uh, safe when securely stowed. Is it nice? And if you were going to be carrying it in a pocket, the the nib is uh, stored nib up. Um, really cool mechanism. Uh, writes really well. Things I don't like is um, I, I wish there would have been a section in there, but you know that would ruin the look of the thing. It's a little slippery to handle. I think in other people's hands, you know, if you're under the age of 70, this is probably great. <laughs> uh, it um, the filling was not as straightforward as I thought. I might as well just take this apart so you can see it. Now I can do this now because uh, I've done this before. You know, even that's kind of cool. 
the uh, it uses a Lamy cartridge that uh, I was able to fill pretty much completely full. I did not have to use um, I didn't have to cheat and use uh, uh, hyperdermic for it. Uh, it's got this cutout window so you can see how f full you are. But I was trying to do this before with um, with that other device over this, and I was just thinking, this can't be right. <laughs> and when you put it back in, see there's threads right here. It just screws in. It has a nice knurled area here, so you can put a little bit of oomph into it. So once you know how to do it, um, filling is easy. By the way, that's the other thing I've kind of found is that when you do put it back in, you want to screw this all the way past the, there's a positive click detent. And you can probably just put a little bit more pressure on it so that when it comes back and is closed, those lines will uh, line up. So anyhow, that's the Lamy Dialog 3. Um, I'm going to be keeping it for a while. I love writing with it. The uh, the slipperiness I can uh, I can deal with. Um, I, you know, the more I handle this pen, the more I like it. It's not a, a vintage flex. It's not a flex pen, uh, but you can get a little bit of line variation out of it, and that's cool in a in a pretty new pen. So I hope you got some value on it, and. Um, that's my review.